All right, this is this is my third take at this, and if this one doesn't make it, I don't know. I'll go make balloon animals or something. Uh, so news of the day, Sunday. It's a slower day um, than than yesterday by a lot, and it's kind of slower than last Sunday too, where we did have a man A game and all that wonderful stuff. Um, now, according to Jeremy Rutherford on Twitter. Uh, the Blues have been outshot 207 to 176 in five-on-five -five action so far. And he used, as well, the dreaded term of, of Stanley Cup hangover, which I cautioned during the summer and going into this season could very well happen, that the St. Louis Blues could have that happen, where they have a slow start to the season and maybe they're not playing like the Blues because they're, they have that Stanley Cup hangover. It happens to every team. So I'm kind of surprised that People didn't think it was going to happen, but I'm not surprised it has happened. It happens to almost every team that wins the Stanley Cup, um, and very often to the finalists as well. So Boston's been lucky so far not to suffer from that, but uh, again, it, it does happen. Uh, Chicago fans, you'll be glad to know Kirby Doc made his first appearance in Rockford and had a couple of shots in that game, and I would imagine they'll be calling him up sooner rather than later. Um, or at least making a decision about whether to have him on the NHL roster or send him back to juniors and go, all right, we got him healthy. He can go back to juniors and dominate, come back in camp next year, make the team, and we're good. But it all depends on what Chicago's plans are here, and I don't think we 100% know. Um, Nikita Gusev is uh, on the fourth line with, with Rooney and Brat, and apparently it's that the coach sat him down and they're trying to figure out exactly what to do with him, and he said he, he likes Rooney. So they, they put him with him. Um, for those following along, Nikita Gusev has two goals, zero assists in five games. So remember during the summer when he talked about how he was hoping to get to Kucherov's record? I'm already going to go on out on a limb and say not going to happen. I'm also going to say if he continues on this rate at, on at this rate, this is why when guys come over from the KHL, we don't know how well they're going to do until they play in a National Hockey League game and until they've played a National Hockey League season. We just don't. There are plenty of players who are really good in the KHL that struggle to make the NHL, and there are players who were healthy scratches in the KHL that came over in the NHL, and hey, look, what do you know? Um, and and that, that does happen. Wasn't it Evander Kane that during the last lockout went over and, and he ended up being a healthy scratch and all this stuff? And uh, Anyways, uh, it, it is too complex. Completely different ice surfaces, leagues, and and games between the two leagues. So, um, hopefully, Gusev turns it around. But if he's playing on the fourth line, if he's not getting minutes, it's going to be harder for him to get points. That's just that's how that works. Uh, the Oilers have demoted Colby Cave down to the American Hockey League. Cave's a, a, a good player to have for a guy that you want to bring up when you need him during injuries, and then just send him back down and not have to worry about him getting claimed on waivers. He went unclaimed on waivers. Um, so, yeah, the Oilers, there's a lot of headlines in this season so far. But you have to kind of keep your fingers crossed, hope the defense remains healthy, and that, that things keep going on this, this track that they're currently on for the Oilers. Uh, Arizona. Nicholas Jalmerson was seen on crutches after the game against Colorado. Will not be making the trip to Winnipeg, so... We don't know how long he's going to be out yet, but if you're on crutches, you're probably not playing the next game. And he will not be in that game as they play in Winnipeg on, I believe it's Tuesday. It is... Yeah, it's Tuesday. Yeah, I really shouldn't have had to turn around. But knowing that it was on the board behind me, I'm like, eh, I'll just take a look at that. Yeah, it's Tuesday. So, yeah, uh, Jalmerson, they will miss him. He, he, he was blocking shots. That's how you end up on crutches, too. Um, he should talk to Chris Tanev about the new equipment Tanev's wearing because he's been blocking shots like crazy. He hasn't missed any time yet, um, other than when he gets a tooth knocked out here and there and he has to go and, you know, I don't know if he puts his teeth in a jar or what he does with his teeth, but yeah, Tanev, Tanev's lost a lot of them. Uh, shot blockers, that happens. Uh, Nolan Patrick is still listed as week to week. He is on the road trip with the team though, and he's been skating with the team, so... He's not projected to necessarily be close, but they're keeping him with the team. Nolan Patrick's one of those curiosities. So Philadelphia has a really good year. Let's just say that Philadelphia has a good year and Nolan Patrick plays like, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 games, whatever. 
Uh, something in that region because of his, his ongoing headaches issue. Do they move on from Patrick or do what, like, what does Philly do if they're good without him? Uh, do you look at that and go, well, he's still got the potential. Maybe he gets moved. Do you move him to get some extra help somewhere else? Uh, going to be interesting to see what happens with Nolan Patrick this year. And I know uh, people are going to label him as a bust. Uh, again, I don't label guys as being a bust if if injuries play into it at all. To me, that does not make a player a bust. It just means he got injured. Uh, a bust is a guy who's in the NHL and he's playing. He's just not playing as well as what was expected. Uh, Boston, uh, the rotation will continue tomorrow night against the Ducks. Garo Halak is in, so it doesn't matter whether you get a shutout. You're probably not going to play in the next game. I 100% agree with this. I, I love that they're going with Halak, Rask, Halak, Rask. It's it's great. Uh, it, it definitely means that you don't have to worry about tiring one goalie or the other out. Uh, at this point in time in Tuka Rask's career and Yarrow Halak's career, I think it extends the amount of time they're going to be able to spend in the NHL. So, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens with the Bruins tomorrow night and how long this rotation works for them. But so far, so good. Uh, four and one record. They've been been pretty darn good. And the one blemish they have is against Colorado. So, you know, uh, overall, pretty solid run. Uh, there you go. You guys are all caught up with the the news of the day. Um, we're waiting for teams to decide. All right, now it's time to start making some trades. I get the feeling trades are going to happen sooner rather than later this year because it did feel like a lot of deals that might have got made were held up by the restricted free agent contract problems and. Uh, the salary cap, I think, has been causing a lot of uh, consternation with GMs, and uh, it's restricted their ability to make deals. But I would imagine deals will start showing up probably in about another week, uh, as some teams are, are, you know, looking hopeless, and others look pretty darn good, and probably just need an extra player here or there to really prop things up. Uh, I don't know how long it is before, if you're Buffalo or Edmonton. You want to maybe beef things up just a little bit, just add a little, just a little bit, just a touch, uh, just to make sure, okay, now we're really, really solid. So I'm not talking like big players. I'm talking like just some depth here and there. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.